Joining me right now is Mark Striegel, URCC featherweight contender. What's going on, Mark? What's up, bro? Thanks for, ha thanks for having me, man. I just finished uh, morning training, the strength and conditioning. I'm in Baguio right now. And, uh, yeah, man, getting ready for this next fight, for this uh, URCC title fight. All right, speaking of the URCC title fight, when exactly is it scheduled for? Because it's hard to find out anything about this fight. Right, right. Well, um, it's actually, it was actually just made official a few days ago. So that's why there haven't been any, uh, there haven't been any official announcements. But, um, yeah, it's good timing with this interview because I just found out that it'll be August 25th at uh, The Cove, which is uh, Okada, Okada Casino uh, in Manila. So August 25th, that's a Saturday. And I'll be headlining the card against uh, Dog Yom Lee for the URCC uh, featherweight title. All right, exclusive right here. Boom. Yeah, boom. Uh, <laughs> that's good to hear because I know you've been wanting this fight for, for a long time now. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Dog Yom Lee, he's, uh, you know, I think he's a pretty arrogant guy. He's... Uh, I think he needs to be humbled, you know, and uh, it's one of those things where I don't like him. I know he doesn't like me, and um, yes, yeah, so it's going to make for an exciting fight uh, for the fans for sure. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Of You stepped into the cage at URCC Bet 6 last June, yeah. am I correct? And you confronted uh, him. Well, no, that was, that was, oh, right, right, yeah, 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 the last bets card where he, he fought in the main event against the Filipino fighter and um yeah I confronted him um that was the second time actually we had one of those the la the first one was last December um at you also um in one of the URCC bets shows where I beat his I beat his teammate I beat his uh uh I beat his student um in the main event uh, in URCC Cebu and after the fight he stepped in the cage and he said uh he said, you just beat my teammate. Um, this is just my training partner. What do you think I'm going to do to you? And then, of course, I jumped on that. And I'm like, wow, dude, like, you're an asshole. You just said your teammate, your student is only your training partner. Like, you're a horrible coach, a horrible captain, man. Like, how do you think that makes him feel, you know? So uh, it kind of all, all snowballed from there. And that, that's how it started. When you guys are going back and forth, one thing that's unique about this is that you have to have a translator there, so it's hard yeah, to talk <laughs> trash, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? No, I agree. I agree. It's funny. Uh, there's just like that. Uh, I guess that 10, 20 second window delay where we have to have the translator, and then it's like boom, back at it. You know, so there's just that window of delay in between. But uh, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it was also funny that he confronted you or not really confronted you but he was in the cage after you know you beat his teammate and then when you confronted him six months later he was saying to you like hey let's not talk trash let's well, take care know, of it in the cage see that's the weird thing man you know like to be honest i think i'm in this guy's head because you know he talks so much trash when i beat his teammate in Cebu. he was he was like seriously this guy was so arrogant man he grabbed the mic he was like, I'm the champion. You don't even get a talk right now. He grabbed the mic from me. Um, you know, my moment where I won, you know, and then, uh, yeah, he was just like, it was just like a piece of shit, man. Yeah, excuse me. He's just like a piece of crap, arrogant guy, you know, like from a champion, you know, you should uh, hold yourself to a higher standard. And then, uh, and then after he won his last fight in, in, uh, in June, I stepped in the cage and I was expecting something similar, you know, that he was going to start talking trash again, like, yeah, you're next, blah, 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 because that's what he did when we were in Cebu. And then it was a total 180. It was a total reversal. He was like, yeah, you know, let's just, uh, let's just let our fists do the talking and have a good fight. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, what, what's going on, man? Like, are you like, are you, one, you're either scared and I'm in your head, or two, you realize that, you were too cocky and arrogant the last time and it kind of backfired and now you're trying to play the humble card, you know? So I, I don't know what it is, but it was just, uh, it was a little strange. It was kind of weird, yeah. It was funny to me because he threw you a curveball when yeah, you were no, going totally. 100 miles per hour and he just threw that curveball at you and you're just like, <laughs> it kind of seemed like it irks you even more. Yeah, I know. No, it was, it was, to be honest, it just threw me off a little bit. I was like, huh? Like, really? Like, this guy, this guy was such an, a cocky guy, you know, and, uh, 
in Cebu, and then now you're playing the humble card. Like, what's what's going on here? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him, but uh, you know, we'll find out. Uh, we'll find out come August 25. So, yeah, it's great to you know have this back and forth. It builds a lot of hype for the division. It builds a lot of hype for the promotion. And for the fighters also, because he, you're a veteran, and he's a guy that's coming up, so he wants to fight somebody like you. He needs to fight somebody like you to challenge himself, right? He can't just beat guys that are three and zero or four and five. He needs, you know, a well, tough guy. Well, you know, that's the thing. Like, um, one of the things that I called him out about at the at the last um, the last card was uh, when he was uh, the last uh, bets show, uh, URCC bets. In uh, June, when he played the humble card and changed his tune, you know, um, I heard word on the street was that he was asking for a tune-up fight, mm-hmm. for that for that to be a tune-up fight. So I was like, "What the hell? Like, we're fighting in you know that's June, July, August. We're fighting in two months. Why are you asking for a tune-up fight before we're fighting? Like, that's just weird. Like, I'm not asking for a tune-up fight. I beat your teammate in December. I don't need a tune-up fight. Like, I'm ready to go right here. You know, like, what are you doing?" You know, so that was uh, that was a little strange. And then plus his uh, his new humble take. You know, like yeah, it was just it was just a little odd to be honest. It was yeah, it threw me off a little bit. It makes people excited for the fight, though. That's what's that's what's you know at the end of the day, that's what you need and that's what you want. Yeah. And he needs it too because he is a young guy coming up. Um, now let's go back to a few years back. You know, because you just returned to the Philippines and started competing for. URCC again. Yes. But before yes. that, you were competing for one championship. And you actually, your last fight, you won. And then you left the promotion. Like, what what caused that decision? Like, why did you decide to go with our URCC? Well, um, you know, I, I, had a good, uh, I had a good run with one. And to be honest, I've, uh, you know, I have nothing, uh, nothing bad to say about one. Um, I, uh, I left on a win. My contract expired. My contract finished. Um, you know, but one of, one of the main reasons was I was only fighting uh, once a year with them. You know, I was only getting one fight a year with them. And, uh, you know, as a fighter, as a full-time fighter, I mean, I do a little bit of, I do a little bit of modeling and uh, um, some brand endorsement on the side. But, you know, uh, fighting is, is my full-time gig, you know. You know, that's that's my job. I'm a, I'm a fighter first and foremost. So fighting once once a year just wasn't sustainable. It wasn't enough, you know. So um, I decided to go back to URCC and uh, be a free agent for a while. And um, yeah, it's been good. And now I got my uh, my second uh, my second shot at uh, at a world title. So excited about this. You returned to URCC at URCC 30. You know, you you returned after eight months on the sidelines. Did you expect such a quick finish in that fight? Um, you know, you always try to go out and, uh, you know, try to, try to finish the guy. Like, I, I don't like to go, you know, play this, uh, point game and, you know, I always try to take it to my opponent and, uh, try to, try to take him out, you know? Um, you know, I never want fight of the night because fight of the night means it was a war and both guys got really messed up, you know? So I always try to, try to take out my opponent, you know, and, uh, uh, always take the fight to them. Um... Actually, before that fight, I uh, I tore my uh, plantar fasciitis in my foot, like, mm. uh, well, about a year before that, actually, but I re-tore it about a week before the fight. So, um, and then I, uh, I, I kind of popped it, uh, like, about two hours before, uh, backstage, before the fight as well. So, about a week before, I re-tore it, and then two hours before the fight, while I was warming up in my locker room, um, I heard it again. So, um mentally there was a bit of a sense of urgency that was one of the reasons why i was like oh man like i don't know like a uh, plantar fasciitis if you're not familiar it's uh, it's the ligament on the bottom of your foot it's the same uh, injury that dominic cruz actually has so it really affects your mobility and uh, movement on the balls of your feet on your toes so you know every step i was taking with my foot was really really painful and i was thinking like wow i have no mobility right now i'm about to fight in like 10 minutes um, I have really bad mobility. I have maybe one round, probably two rounds max left in my, uh, you know, in my foot before mobility completely goes out the window and adrenaline just like, uh, uh, shuts out, you know? Um, so that was part of the reason why I was like, All right, I got to finish this guy, take him out fast in the first round because my, my foot's wrecked and I don't know if I'll have, uh, 
if I'll have the the the, the mobility and the the movement to be able to go you know a three round war with this guy. So that was uh, that was kind of the logic and that was the my mentality going into that fight. Did that injury affect you in your fight that December? Yeah, definitely, um, definitely. Um, I had a horrible. Uh, you know, well, not horrible. I mean, I'd say not the best training camp. Uh, I barely did any running for that camp just because my feet were, my feet were wrecked. Um, and uh, yeah, like jump rope, I can only do jump rope for a few minutes on the balls of my feet before my feet would, uh, would uh, give out. It, it's a weird injury, plantar fasciitis. I mean, it mainly affects runners and uh, people that do a lot of uh, uh, movement and uh, exercises where they're always uh, slamming their feet onto the mat. And for someone with a, with a fight style like mine, where I, I like to be mobile and dance around on my feet, it's, uh, it's, it can be a pretty common injury. So yeah, it definitely did affect my, uh, my, December, uh, my December fight and my August fight before that at Araneta. But uh, yeah, injuries, no injuries right now. I'm feeling great. My feet are both, uh, both great. Haven't felt this good in a long time. So I'm, uh, I'll be ready for August. How was the, you know, the recovery? Was the recovery something that, you know, came easily or did you have a lot of obstacles throughout the year? Oh, a lot of obstacles. Um, plantar fasciitis, it's, it's a ligament. It's a very thin, uh, fibrous uh, ligament. So, like all that don't get a lot of blood flow, they, they take a lot of time to heal. So, it's really just like a waiting game. And uh, I had lots of different kinds of uh, treatment. I had uh, PRP at one point. Um, I, uh, you know, I have cortisone shots, but cortisone shots aren't that best for long-term recovery. That's more short-term. Um, you know, just a lot of ice and a lot of, uh, rehab and a lot of stretching and just building up that, that strength over time. But, but really it's uh, it's a time thing, you know, with, with any ligament injuries, it's really a, uh, it's a slow, slow process. Yeah. Well, now you're back. You got the fight yeah, you wanted. Yeah, go. You're a hundred percent. Exactly. Yeah, I'm yes, excited sir. for you. You know, it's going to be a big <laughs> fight because this guy is one of the, you know, prospects coming out of Korea. Yep. He is the title, you know, holder. And you're the challenger. Yep. You're the veteran. It's going to be a test for both of you guys, man. Good luck to you. And yep. uh, I will definitely you, be bro. speaking to you in the future. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me on your show, man. And uh, yeah, pump for this fight.